would say family business about about 50 years. Fell into it really. My dad done it, so I um, helped him out when he got uh, arthritis. He couldn't do the work anymore, so I started doing it. Very quiet, very very quiet. Out of the two keys. The area once the big stores come in, they uh, the small business that it's very difficult to try and survive. Not only local, so I don't have to travel to work. I'm only around the corner. Everything is here if you want it. You know, every takeaway, every every shop that you can't say that you can't get what you want. Everything is here. So for local people, it's pretty good. Bearman's, when years ago, we go to the Sea Farm Christmas at Christmas, go there with my family all year round. It's quite an high class shop. We used to sell most things that you wanted, had a restaurant in there. And you used to get like toys and uh, Lucky Dip sweets or a little bag with all little bits and pieces in it, like goods and one thing and another, like, you know. But it, it was good. It was the only sort of shop that was around here, like at the time. It was, you know, it was a lot of people come from. Further out to, to shop there. The local people went there as well, so it was pretty. Uh, it was pretty good for business, I think. Went in at every pub. Some of them you could have a. Was more where they played live music. All the uh, East Enders, all the old people used to go to have a sing song. Bloke would be playing the piano, and everyone get up and have a good time. Yeah, I think you, you had uh, some played there. You had Iron Maiden. I think State Quo played around here, and a few of the other, um, you know, well-known. Which at the time started around this area. And that's how it was. I should have said 20 customers, I should have got all my mates coming in and made that one other customers. But there you are. See you when you come in. Okay. See you later. We've been here since 1958. It's always been called Sheila's Florist. This is what we call Lizzie Ampus. And this is just coming all coming from Holland. And it's just coming today. And we get this in all different colours. In brother, sisters, my aunts, my uncles. They were all in the flower game. And if it wasn't that, we'd have a tendency to be a little bit fruiterers as well. So we've always been crossed among this. It's a lovely, nice flowers last pretty well in the pink. You get the orange, you get the red, you get the yellow. In fact, they come in about 10 different colours. Now, Dad was one of these guys who would help anybody. If someone broke down outside the shop here, he'd be the first one out there. Lend them a tyre, a wheel, change the tyre, or whatever. And we're probably one of the last of the, the old firm down this road. We've got good neighbours and we, we do a lot of Islamic stuff. But each day we go and get fresh stock. We have these are what they call Naomi roses, <coughs> which are the best roses and the smell of them are absolutely fantastic. We had lots of good shops down this road. The well, Hills is, hello son. They're characters, you, you, you get to know the characters. It's Joan Littlewood, lovely, lovely lady. Jerry Raffles used to come in his shop and buy the flowers. Because Jerry would always give my father tickets when the opens of certain shows. Lovely, lovely theatre. It was a very homely theatre, which it still is. You know, when you sit down there, you, you feel as though you're actually in with it. Because you could, people come off the stage and walk around you. But this particular show was hot. I, I didn't understand what it was. And it was the taste of honey. And we went up there, and sitting next to us, the woman passed remark to my father and said, would you mind my mink? It was Angry Bergman. It was her sitting next to us, and her mink coat, and Dad, being a big fella, he sat on a mink coat and she kindly asked him, would you mind? <laughs> they did. That's my son there. Oh. Yeah, we're sent down to South Woodford. It's for our 20th anniversary. These go up to um, Jamaica, because they're all silk, and they can go in the planes okay without any problems. There's what they call oriental lilies, and they come out very, very big. So, uh, you know, th these are fantastic flowers. You only, you only need three in a bunch, perhaps, in a vase, and smell absolutely wonderful. But always remember, the stronger the smelling flower, uh, the less they last. 
because all the energy goes to the flash. Fetch house pub was always buzzing across the road. That is now a bet Fred. That shop on the corner where the tattoo part is, that used to be called a modern butcher's. And you see all the guys standing outside of the butcher's. Nathan Berry's, the music shop. Uh, they sold all the pianos, guitars, drums. Before they put the M in, uh, the, uh, the 406 in and the motorways, this road was buzzing all the time. Because we're the old firm and we haven't never changed our way of going on. We haven't gone in, perhaps we haven't gone into the 21st century. shop's called Soul Foods Pharmacy because we're looking at soul foods, foods that replenish or uplift the soul. I used to deliver down on the Leighton Highway to many of the shops. Also, I used to stop on the high road. On summer's day, I'd stop the van and I'll do my coconuts, jelly coconuts. Fresh coconut juice. This is very good for you. It's very healthy. Um, powerful drink with lots of electrolytes and enzymes. I do fruit and vegetables, alternative health products, vegan food and natural juices as well. So we're about healing here, not just for the residents, for people to come from far, to come here to understand that they can come and get healing, good quality fruits and vegetables, or plant-based organic foods. Or you add it to whatever you're going to add it to, your food or your soup. Or your... I'm setting up this vision from my perspective, which is from an Afri Afri-centric perspective. The culture, the information, the understanding is going to come from an African perspective. When you go to different shops, you'll see that they come from their perspective, whether it be uh, Italian or, or, or Romanian or Polish. Having your cultural identity is very important in terms of self-esteem. When you value yourself and value who you are, then you're going to value other people and other people's cultures as well. It's a busy high road and I like the culture down here. Because community, when you break down the word, is people that have a common unity. A unity that is common to all of them, that's what brings people together. Yes, this is my zone. This is my area to live on Camel Road. There was like Caribbean guys, there was African guys, there was English guys. And we just created a whole family. Like, there wasn't a lot back in back in my day, there wasn't a lot in Leightonstone to do. We went past as a youth centre. You know, we've done a lot of sports there. But I've always, I always wanted to be a chef. I always was cooking. My dad was a chef, so I wanted to be a chef from I was like eight, nine, ten, trying to sort of like um, help my dad in the kitchen. Luckily, he allowed me to help him in the kitchen. So, my shop's right here. Jerk and juice. Across the road from Plantation Inn. I got my work experience in Plantation Inn when I was 15. And I think they've been there for 30 odd years. And I was the first Caribbean shop on the high road. And I was, I was lucky and fortunate enough to do my work experience there because um, they're still there now. You know, I know, I know George, I know the family. We got, you know, neutral respect. And I'm just glad that, like, it's, it was funny to get a shop across the road. When, when we was younger, we could, you know, you could line up and get your chicken and your dumplings and your patties. They used to do homemade patties as well. But yeah, man. And I was always dreaming that one day, you know what, that's, this is going to be me, you know, creating dishes and that. And yeah, God, 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 God bless my blessings. And that end of the high road is more like, you know, not low class, but low class and up this end is upper class. You can always tell there'll be pubs and like legit wine bars and all the rest of it up this end. And this end, we didn't really get that. I was always at this end. Fat Chas to Cattle was my like zone. Once you're from Leightonstone, everyone knows everyone. Even if you don't talk to everyone, you recognize everyone. You recognize that, oh, that person's from Leightonstone. It's an interesting area because it's quiet, but also there's a lot going on. Leightonstone, I used to just look at it as a long high road with things going on around it. Was there cinemas in Leightonstone? No, I, I never known the cinema to be in Leightonstone. Good evening. Did you miss me? I'm not just a plaque on a gas station, you know. Come with me and see the cinemas I used to enjoy in my day. Sit back, relax and make yourselves comfy.
So this is where it all begins. December the 18th, 1909. The Palace Electric Theatre. It had its own tea room, you know. But sadly it was short-lived. The Bird's Pub. Named after a movie I made. I hear on the menu the chicken is rather good. I hope you're not afraid of the dark. Cinema. The last of my movies shown here was Frenzy in 1972, shortly before the cinema closed. Leighton Stone's last, until now. As a boy, I memorized every tram timetable. By the time I was eight years old, I'd ridden every tram route in London. Gaiety Cinema showed one of my early films, The Lodger, made in 1926. It was one of the first films I had a cameo in. had a rifle range during World War One. Only threepence for five bullets, you know. I'm a little tired. Shall we take the bus? Confess, this one's a little hard to find. After the Rex closed down, it became a bowling alley. Now it's a room. Shame for the rest. The State Cinema showed mainly foreign language films. I hear it's a banqueting hall now. I'd love to see the menu. The French movie. Diabolique inspired the shower scene in Psycho. That had him running. In the great raid that happened in August 1915, 500 houses got bombed and damaged. I survived, lucky enough. That's my old house in the background. It's a gas station now. Let's have a look at the blue plaque to my name, while we get fried chicken to go. Yum yum. That's my favorite pub, the Plough and Harrow. My favorite.
favorite cinema. They knocked it down and turned it into Paramount House. Paragreen Police Station. An incident happened there, but that's a story for another time. Enders from years ago, but they're the East Enders of today. And, all and originally we were Dutch immigrants. Granddad came over um, in 1896 or 95, I believe, and he was a 13 year old. He lodged with another family from a different pie and mash shop, and that's where he learnt the pie and mash trade. And he started his own business up, I think he was in Hoxton with his brother just before the First World War, he moved here in 76. So he's been here 40 years. Now. Adults coming in now, and they were children when they used to come in. Kids, small, small children. You know, so I've seen them all grown up, and a lot of our regulars who used to live around here have moved away, and they drive in. That is one of the best pie and mash shops I've ever been in. Oh. I've been here for 50 years, nearly. You know, the best one. The best one in London. I mean, I've tried every. I've tried, I've tried quite a lot of. Um, Pie mash sauce, but this is the best one. Oh, the first time I used the pie mash sauce was about 12, when I was 12, about 12 years of age, you know, when I came over from Serbia. I came over from Serbia in 1968, in following year, I suppose, you know. Oh, wow. It's not using it. Ever since then, I fell in love with it. When the Serbs come over, I bring them here for delicatessen. <laughs> <laughs> um, we do everything here like we did in 1926. This oven's from 1961. We've got a, a machine that rolls the pastry out, that's from 1949, the 240 volts, that, that machine. But these ovens are irreplaceable really because they give the pies that particular character. We start making early in the morning because we make everything in the morning. Like the oven is just so, I can bake the pies and they kind of come out the oven at 11 o'clock, you know, at the right time. Our own, our own meat, we, we get sides of beef. We bone them ourselves, we mince them ourselves. It's the only way you can tell what you're getting. This is Alfie, this is my son. He's taking over. Yeah, he's taking over, yeah? Yeah. Good show you deals. These are um, Irish eels, these ones come from Ireland, and then we obviously still keep them by it. Picking them up about every once a week or maybe once every two weeks, depending on how many we're selling. Yeah, oh, these ones are Dutch. I think these are a bit bigger, as you can tell. Oh, these ones are a bit more livelier. Yeah, there's some in this one as well. Sauce the liquor, helping yourself with getting early. We're getting here. We were in here one of the days this week at seven o'clock. You know, but bear in mind we've got to leave home soon after six to be here. We don't live in the area anymore. Years ago, people wanted to move out of the area. My dad wanted to move out, so we moved out to Brentwood. And now to get back into this area, it's it's expensive. You know, you could buy houses cheaply. Even people who say they're London born and bred and, and oh, back a few generations, a lot of immigrants go to London, a lot. You know, and, really, and, and turn of the last century, it was full of immigrants, and a lot more family. You know, and I think this is why most of Londoners can embrace each other's cultures quite easily.
my dad came here from another country with nothing and started businesses and were very successful. It's a melting pot, isn't it? That's right. That's right. At my uh, family, the first house they bought, my grandfather did, was in um, Norlitton Road in Leytonstone, uh, which we all lived out of. And then my, and my dad opened up the business in 67. Yeah, went to school around here. Um, family decided to move to North London in 1980, and then I promptly came back to Leytonstone to uh, work in the family business, and, uh, and I've never left. I grew up in the suburbs. I don't know what it was like. I was a kid, we had mates, we went to school, we had a very rich group of friends. We had Muslim friends, we had Sikh and Hindu mates from all over, you know, from the West Indies, from Africa. You know, I was, I was probably the only Greek at the school, you know, and we were all mates, we all rubbed along, you know. Was it a good place to grow up? It's, it's where I grew up. And you didn't know any different? I didn't know any you different. Know, our childhood was, was, was very happy. Yeah. Um, but when I look back and I tell my kids about some of the stuff that, because we had a shop and yeah. then you were in a lot of trouble. And so when I tell them about it, they think, geez, how did you put up with that? Yeah, how, how did you survive that? Well, you, you just did. You just yeah. got over it. One thing for sure, because there, there was a generation, I think in the 70s, I know from the Asian community, where the indigenous whites did not did not um, warm to them at all. Yeah. When the East Africans came over, yeah. there was a clear... Before that, because my dad was here before that, yeah. um, it, was, it was a very different atmosphere. But after the East Africans came in the 70s, um, there was a lot more hostility, a lot more hostility um, in East London. I, I, I remember that. Uh, you know, the, do you remember that um, the river, rivers of blood speech by our yeah. our uh, I, I, good friend? I, I always, I always tell the story about my granddad. Oh well, he gives me a couple of thousand quid. I go back to Cyprus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My father never had any intention of settling here. What? Did, did, did any of them? I, I, Everything I, was always short yeah. term. It was really, you know, what, make some money and yeah. build yourself a nice house, maybe yeah. buy a, an acre, a few acres of land back home, because we came from farming stock, and uh, and go back, but not, not he realised he never that we were, he wasn't going to, because his kids were never going to go back. The stories I get from my mum and dad was, if they had, could have cobbled the, the money together in the first couple of years of being in the UK, they would have gone straight back, but they borrowed the money. A lot of the stuff that you see in the shop, all these pictures, I've, I've never purchased, I acquire along the way. People come in and say, oh, you can put this up in the shop. How's that for you, sir? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. Cheers. started the show 11 years ago. People really want to buy more local products. So like there is local breweries, there is local honey, there is local crisp. So people do ask where things come from. It slowly, slowly started to change the products we used to sell for the more environmental friendly products because we just thought it was the right thing to do and there was a very good response from our customers why we decided to invest in it. It's much nicer than selling something in the package and off you go, that's for sure. Yeah, you get to know people. I like it, I like the people, you know. And I like it when I came here, I say, look, this is a lovely shop. <laughs> no, no, we're still here, don't worry, we're not going out. <laughs> Where we are now is quite crowded and we can't give people social distancing. Um, basically, we can't offer everything that we want in this space as well. The grocery room is going to be here, the craft beer and wine. Yeah, got the 
conservatory. Our friends that were here before, they kept this place in such a nice state. Really well. And I'm having six in here in space. I think we're gonna be ready to start moving in three weeks. I'm just thinking latest when we're really lucky. There is a very nice community friendship in being part of the community in latest on. And everybody's trying to do their bit. I started ringing here in the late 60s. A friend and I started at the age of 12 and just continued. Bell ring is a multifaceted thing, like both physical and intellectual. But I think the thing I enjoy most is the friendship. You know, we're, we're a group of people that meet on a regular basis, we know one another, and it's just a friendship. And it snows, the bell being down because it's safe. And then we're just doing it slowly, slowly getting it right the way up. So it's set like that. I haven't run this for about 10 minutes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. We might as well make the best use of it. Probably won't be doing it for much longer.
So what now then? What will you do now? Come home. <laughs> yeah. Go off and have a cup of tea. Have a good day. Have a big breakfast. just off Blankstone Iron and you get everything you want. The top end was the place we came for shopping. I can remember Bearman's predominantly. I used to go to Lake County High and walk through Bearman's every day on my way home, look around. And it was big. It took a lot of room up. There isn't many places that you could just spend half an hour just walking around and drooling really. There was jewellery and there was shoes. It was just a lovely place and it was a luxury, and it was a huge department store. It was probably based on Selfridges, wasn't it, Bam? Do you think he maybe used Selfridges as a role model? I remember going to see Father Christmas, and it was wonderful. You know, you got in this carriage or something, and you sailed off, and it was unbelievable. The little girls always wanted dollies. I've still got one dolly upstairs, actually, I found her. There wasn't a lot of spare money, so you had one dolly. You know when you're growing up and you're under 10, you don't have any conception of money or where it comes from, do you? You're, just, you're grateful if you get something. Rialto is at the back of Bearman's. And you walk down the side to get to it. Here's the door to the cinema here, in this part, this side. When you're young, you don't wonder how Rialto fitted into Bearman's. You just went into the cinema. It might have been under, over, I don't know. But I did used to go to the Rialto with my friends. Saturday morning pictures was probably sixpence or a tuppence or something silly. Yeah, because everybody went to the cinema in those days. The TV was, came on at six o'clock at night and went off again at about ten. And it was quite limited. I can remember Rialto, Rex, State, Century. Green Mountain, the church. Look at the corner. Like that, <coughs> look, Rialto. Come up and have a cup of tea in Lion. Lion's tea shop. At the next corner, which is Barclay Bank, you see Bar that was there. So when you sat upstairs having a cup of tea, you were overlooking Bearman. We did go there because my mum liked the cigarette and refused to smoke in the street because she didn't think it was ladylike. And because she was a nurse, she had a kind of a professional aura she liked to keep. Take care. Bye now. People meet in the high road, but it goes right through the middle, doesn't it? Lake's only long, narrow. Most people live close to the high road. I became interested in mulberry trees, writing my book, Unraveling the Yarn. I came across a, a website called morrislondinium.org, discovering a mulberry tree map, and everything you want to know about mulberry trees is there. The Romans brought mulberry trees to this country. There are many across East London. The first one I visited is the one by the historic Leytonstone House and you can see this beautiful tree which has been really well looked after. Mulberry trees, they nearly always have a story to tell and the one at Leytonstone House it is linked to the history of the people who were living there in the 19th century and possibly the original owner in the 18th century. Through research I discovered these beautiful books, family sketchbook and a journal. 
Both are the work of Ellen Buxton. She's a 16-year-old girl at the time when she, when she was making sketches and writing her journal about her everyday life in Leighton Stone House. She was part of the Buxton family, key in abolishing slavery and saving Epping Forest for local people. She was the second eldest in the family. She had to look after uh, several of her younger uh, brothers and sisters. And she had a talent for art. Uh, she had a tuition in, in drawing, as Victorian schoolgirls might have done. But she uh, actually excelled at it. Her writing was very sympathetic. She drew the picture of this mulberry tree. And I was absolutely uh, so enchanted by this. Because when you look at the mulberry tree as it is now, the characteristics of it are still there. And Ellen has drawn it as um, a thing that the children used to play, climbing, and of course they picked the fruit. She was drawing a tree that was already mature. It would certainly have been planted 1800 or before. We have a great many mulberries, mulberries this year. Which are very nice. The boys climb up to the top of the tree and throw the ripe ones to us. Going into the forest to find wood anonymes. Papa reading the times. Eleanor and baby Barclay. The view from my window. Ellen's work also revealed priceless insight into the look of Leighton Stone at that time. The front was extended by the family to create this large area for the approach to Leighton Stone House. Possibly why the Green Man roundabout is the size and shape it is. In Ellen's drawings, you can see the extent of the grounds. View from our meadow of Leytonstone Village and the church. Her book offers insights. Their philanthropy. Taking tea and sugar for a Christmas present to the people in the almshouses. 22nd of the 12th, 1865. The family set off with provisions. In the corner, you can also see the high stone Ellen Buxton married Robert Barclay of Barclays Bank. She had her own family, but never got to see her personal journal published in her lifetime. It was her granddaughter, Ellen Crichton, who published it a hundred years later. I ride the last day of living at Leytonstone, May 3rd, 1866. It's a symbol of our history, tangible, visible, because it wasn't demolished and sold off by the Victorians. They sold it as it was entire to the Bethnal Green Union. It's an extraordinary house in a, a fairly significant sized piece of land so you can see it, get to give it its own kind of grace and respect, it's not crowded out, although it, there are additional buildings there now from what there would have been originally. But the secret is to go round to the back. There's the three curved shapes of elevation there, giving it its, you know, Georgian aspect. And that compares any day with William Morris's house in Forest Road. It really is beautiful. Inside and out, Leighton House um, really um, is, is uh, a preserved symbol of, a, of our 19th and 18th century history and our link to the people who were closely involved in the anti-slavery movements of those times. And I think we should be really proud of that and make more of it. Recorded memory, the high stone has always been on 
of the few spots in Ice and Stone which gets a mention. Always been thought that the High Stone was Roman. Um, there's no uh, corroboration of that. Nobody's dug it out, I don't think, to check whether there's um, anything Roman that we can trace underneath it. They're doing great things at Stonehenge, so I would have thought it was possible if they if they did redig it to try and uh, date it, but nobody's attempted it. Um, so it's really just folk memory that connects this place with the Romans. Penso che ha sì, stessa. Tu sette mani di pensamento. Idia mia pensione. Mantro nero da destra meccanico. Bretagna dalla faccia. È un stato impediero di un tradimento. Cosa sa? Se qui ti ho messe, ho fatto cancio anni. Guarda, tutto questo era un faccio in quel giorno. Scambia. Saviamo Roma, calma dunanas prospos prescano, e primo posto, ui chiuna tetaria. Che tu sono guardia o nuento? Che cosa? È contagi. Ah, lei. Erano quattro miles. Redania la. Redania la. Non dimmi a me le cose. Camul Durman, più ne meno cose. Shh. Che cosa? Il demone dalla faccia. Pure pudica sono la folle. Non se dalle mani il legiatone. Non sa toffatare. Eh, non possiamo nocare qui? Non è saprone. E un piatto in miliare? Questo non posso agire, so?